Dear students, I am Muhammad Abdul Sami Siddiqui, Director, Center for Professional Development of Urdu Medium Teachers, Maulana Azad National Urdu University, Hyderabad. Today, I welcome you for this class on Brief History of English Drama. Today, we shall discuss about what is a drama, the elements of drama, types of drama, and then the brief history of English drama. You all know that drama is a form of literature. It is also known as play. It's a story with dialogues and actions. It is meant to be performed in front of an audience by actors who take on the roles of characters. It's a collaborative work. Director, producer, actors, dressmakers, musicians, electricians, scene painters, and many other are involved in it. Let's take a quick view of what are the elements of drama. Plot, character, theme, settings, these are the major elements of drama. In the dramatic devices, we have dramatic irony, soliloquy, aside, expectation and surprise. In the types of drama, we have miracle plays, mystery plays, morality plays, interludes, tragedy, comedy, tragic comedy, farce, melodrama, mask, one act plays, historical plays, problem play, absurd drama, expressionistic drama and epic theatre. Now let's move to origin of English drama. The origin of English drama can be traced back to 13th century with two varieties of plays, namely miracles and mysteries. These plays were based on life of Christ and scenes from Bible. These plays were staged within the church and churchyards. The nature of these plays was didactic while characters were played by priests and monks. Later, the stage gradually moved from the church to the streets. It led to the participation of laymen as characters in the play. However, direction still remained with the clergy. Miracle plays is another type of plays, which were based on the lives of saints while mystery plays were based on biblical themes. Miracle plays contained humorous elements in, in them. The plays were performed in the 13th, 14th and 15th centuries across England as cycles or series. During the mid 15th centuries came morality plays and interludes. The drama moved from religious to moral teaching. Biblical characters and saints were replaced by personified virtues and vices. A popular morality play is Everyman. At the same time, interludes were staged during the festivities or business. A popular interlude is John Haywood's The Four Ps. Both morality and interlude retained the humor. In the 16th century, the revival of learning also changed drama in England. English dramatists began to imitate classical models of Greek and Latin. Ralph Royster Doister by Nicholas Udall appeared in 1550 as the first comedy. Garboduck by Thomas Sackville and Thomas Norton appeared in 1552 as the first tragedy. Do remember that Garboduck is also the first play written in blank verse. Around 1580, the university wits appeared on the scene and influenced the drama. We have John Lilly, George Peel, Robert Greene, Thomas Kidd, 
Thomas Lodge, Thomas Nash and Christopher Marlowe. Among these playwrights, Christopher Marlowe deserves a special mention. His play Dr. Faustus, Jew of Malta and Edward II are very popular. Before William Shakespeare entering the English stage, England had got its own theatre. The first theatre was built in 1576. It was circular and open to the sky. Then appeared Shakespeare along with his fellow dramatists like Ben Jonson and John Webster during the reign of Elizabeth I. In 1594, Shakespeare became a playwright and actor for the theatre company Lord Chamberlain's Men, which later became King's Men under James I. In his career, Shakespeare partly owned Globe Theatre. Dear students, you all know that William Shakespeare is a major playwright in the history of English drama. He has contributed 37 plays, including comedies, tragedies, romances, historical plays and Roman plays. Out of his 18 comedies, The Two Gentlemen of Verona, Love's Labour Lost, As You Like It, The Merchant of Venice, Twelfth Night, Much Ado About Nothing, Major for Major and All's Well That Ends Well are heavily anthologized across the world. Even in our B.A. syllabus of Maulana Azad National Urdu University, we have the play Merchant of Venice. The clown or fool is a prominent feature of Shakespearean comedies. It is a direct development of vice from morality plays. All of the comedies by Shakespeare end on a happy note. They are romantic comedies and not the classical ones. Shakespeare has written 10 tragedies out of which four are popularly known as four great tragedies. They are Hamlet, Othello, Macbeth and King Lear. Unlike classical tragedies, Shakespearean tragedies deviate from the unities of time, action and place. They also display violence on stage. The central characters in Shakespearean tragedies possess a tragic flaw or hamartia, which leads to their downfall. It is contrary to the fate in classical tragedies. Shakespeare has written 10 historical plays, King John, Richard II, Richard III, Henry IV, Henry V and Henry VI are famous. His historical plays were mainly derived from Hollinshed's Chronicles. In other words, Hollinshed's Chronicles is a source of the storyline for Shakespearean plays, especially the historical plays. Shakespeare's historical plays are different from his tragedies. The main character in the historical play fails in attaining material objectives while in the tragedies, he struggles with issues related to soul, spiritual order and values to uphold. Shakespeare has written some plays related to Roman characters. Julius Caesar is one of the best examples. In the Renaissance, English dramatists were interested in Roman literature and history. Shakespeare, like Ben Jonson and other contemporaries, took inspiration from the Roman classists like Plotage. So for his Roman plays, Shakespeare has used Plotage's biographies as the source. Among the contemporaries of Shakespeare, we have Ben Jonson and John Webster who deserve a special mention. Ben Jonson with his play, Every Man in His Humour, brought into practice a new type of comedy known as comedy of humours. John Webster wrote revenge tragedies, The Duchess of Malfi and The White Devil. 
are the examples. In 1640s, the theatres were banned in England by the Puritan regime. After about two decades, the theatres were reopened in England. This period is known as restoration period. During this period, restoration comedy or comedy of manners ruled over the stage. Comedy of manners maintained a witty, cynical and amoral tone. It criticized the hypocrisy of elite classes. The notable writers of this period are John Dryden and William Congreve. Dryden's play All for Love and Congreve's play The Way of the World are noteworthy restoration comedies. During Romantic age, poetry overshadowed drama. The poets such as Lord Byron, John Keats and P.B. Shelley wrote plays as well. The most successful play of the Romantic period is Shelley's The Sensi. In the Victorian era, the passing of Theatres Act removed the monopoly of patent theatres on drama. This period starts with Richard Sheridan and ends with George Bernard Shaw. Sheridan wrote The Rivals and School for Scandals, which followed the style of comedy of manners. Dear students, please remember that Oscar Wilde is the most prominent dramatist of the Victorian age. He was popular for his comedies. His most successful play is The Importance of Being Earnest. In the modern age, we find Henrik Ibsen, James Singe and G.B. Shaw ruling over the stage. These three playwrights practiced social realism in theatre. Henrik Ibsen is considered as the father of realism in theatre and also the finest dramatist after Shakespeare. He was from Norway. He also practiced naturalism which had started as a movement in France and advocated by Emily Zola. His play A Doll's House has the distinction of being the most performed play of the 20th century. My dear students, you can watch a separate video on our channel dealing with the play A Doll's House. The other notable plays by Ibsen are An Enemy of the People, The Wild Duck, The Pillars of Society and Hedda Gabler. James Singe was an Irish playwright. He is known for his controversial play The Playboy of the Western World. Among other notable plays, we can mention Riders to the Sea as a major play by James Singe. He was the co-founder of Abbey Theatre in Dublin. He played prominent role in Irish theatre movement. The next playwright is George Bernard Shaw. A.C. Ward is a critic who says that Shaw is to Britain what Socrates was to Athens. With this quote, you can understand the significance of G.B. Shaw as a dramatist. Under Henrik Ibsen's influence, Shaw popularized the drama of ideas, also known as problem plays. He was a prolific writer and produced dozens of plays propagating Marxism. The major plays by G.B. Shaw are Major Barbara, The Doctor's Dilemma, Arms and the Man, Candida and Pygmalion. Dear students, please remember that G.B. Shaw is the only person to have received Nobel Prize in Literature in the year 1925 and an Oscar in 1938 for his works. Among other notable modern dramatists, we have John Galsworthy. His play, 
Silver Box and another play, Strife, are popular. Dear students, after the two world wars, existentialism has influenced the writers and dramatists, informing them about the meaninglessness of human existence. As an offshoot of that, absurd drama came forth. Absurd drama highlights the meaninglessness of human existence. Three prominent practitioners of absurd drama are Samuel Bucket, Harold Pinter and Tom Stoppard. The term theatre of absurd was introduced in literature by Martin Estlin. Samuel Bucket is a major playwright of this type of drama. His play Waiting for Godot is a trend-setting play in the history of English literature. Harold Pinter is another important dramatist. His plays are The Birthday Party, Homecoming and Betrayal. In 2005, Harold Pinter received Nobel Prize in Literature. Another important practitioner of absurd drama is Tom Stoppard. His play Jumpers deserves a special mention. After absurd drama, another important type of drama that came in the 20th century is epic theatre. Bertolt Brecht, who was a German playwright, was the major proponent of this type of drama. The Three Penny Opera, Mother Courage and Her Children, are his notable plays. Another trend-setting play came in 1956. It was written by John Osborne. The title of the play was Look Back in Anger. This play promoted the concept of angry young man and it depicted the disillusionment with the traditional British society. Osborne's play Look Back in Anger remains one of the major influences for the writers thereafter. Dear students, in today's class, we have discussed that English drama began with the miracle and mystery plays, then the morality plays, interludes of the 13th, 14th and 15th centuries. We have also talked about the university wits and then we moved on to William Shakespeare as a major playwright of English drama. For a detailed study of the topic, you can refer to the books being shown on the screen. One is W.J. Long's History of English Literature. Another is M. H. Abraham's a Glossary of Literary Terms. Dear students, if you have any query, please contact us on the address given on the screen. We shall meet in the next lecture with some other topic of your interest. Thank you.